Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yasin ve'l Kur'anil Hakim. İnneke lemin mursalin ala siratin mustaqim. Tenzil el azizir rahim li tunzira qawman ma unzira abauhum fahum ghafilun. Laqad haqqal qawlu ala athirihim fahum la yu'minun. İnne ce'alna fi anaqihim ghalalan fahiyya ila lezgani famukbuhun ve ce'alna min beyni aydihim sadda ve min khalfihim sadda fa'ghashayna fahum la yubsirun ve sawa'un aleyhim anzartahum am lam tunzirhum la yu'minun innema tunziru men itaba zikra ve khashya rahmanı bil gaybi fabeşşiru bi mağfireti ve ajin kerim inna nahnu nuhyil mawta ve naktubu ma qaddamu ve atharahum ve kulla şeyin ahsaynahu fi imamim mubin وَضَرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابِ الْقَرِيَةِ إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ اثْنَيْنِ فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثٍ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُرْسَلُونَ قَالُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُنَا وَمَا أَنْزَلَ الرَّحْمَنُ مِنْ شَيْنٍ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا تَكْذِبُونَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا يَعْلَمُ إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ لَمُرْسَلُونَ وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينُ قَالُوا إِنَّا تَطَيَّرْنَا بِكُمْ لَئِن لَّمْ تَنْتَهُوا لَنَرْجُمَنَّكُمْ وَلَيَمَسَّنَّكُم مِّنَّا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ قالوا طائركم معكم اي ذكرتم بل انتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من اقصى المدينه رجل يسعى قال يا قوم تبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسالكم اجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا اعبد الذي فطنني واليه ترجعون اتخذ من دونه الهه ان يرد الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيء ولا ينقذون إني ظل في ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعوا قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزل على قومه من بعده من جن من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هو خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع الذين معذرون وآيت لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناه وأخرجنا منها منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من خيل وعناب وفجنا فيها من العيون ليأكل من ثمره وما عملت عيدهم فلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تميت العرض من أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وعيت لهم الليل نسخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس التجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عادك العرجون القديم لا شمس ينبغي لها أن تذك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وعيت لهم أن حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشهور وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاع لا حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم لا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم انفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا للذين آمنوا أن نطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه ينات بلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخسمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفيق في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قولوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا مما قدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع الذين معدرون فاليوم لا تظلمون نفس شاء ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم أزواج في ظلالنا للأرائك متكعون فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قول من رب الرحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم لا تأبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين ونعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم 
ولقد ضل منكم جبلا كثيرا فلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون اصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على افواههم وتكلمنا ايديهم وتشهد ارجل بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على اعين فسبق الصراط فانا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانة فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكس في الخلق فلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويهق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أن خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا نعم فهم لا مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب فلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلية لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جن محضرون فلا يهزم قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يؤلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أن خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحي العظام وهي رميم قل يهيها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نار فإذا أتوا منه توقدون أو ليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم فلا وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمه إذا أراد شيئا أن يكون لكم فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم اللهم إنا نستحفظك ونستودعك أدياننا وأبداننا وأنفسنا وأهلنا وأولادنا وأموالنا وكل شنعة تيتنا اللهم جعلنا وإياهم في كنفك وعمانك وعيادك من كل شيطان مريد وجبار عنيد وذي بغي وذي حسد ومن شر كل ذي شر إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم جملنا بالعافية والسلامة وحققنا بالتقوى والاستقامة وعذنا من موجبات الندامة إنك السميع الدعاء اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وأولادنا ومشائخنا وإخواننا في دين ولأصحابنا ولمن أحبنا فيك ولمن أسن إلينا والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات يا رب العالمين وصل اللهم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا كمال المتابت له ظاهرا وباطنا في عافية وسلامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراهمين تمام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحزب السابع في يوم الأحد the seventh part we read on Sunday بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله عدما سبحك وقدسك وسجد لك وعذمك في من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم في مرة وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله عدا كل سنة خلقتهم فيها من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم ألف مرة وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله عدا الصحاب الجارية وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله عدا الدرية الثارية من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم ألف مرة وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله عدا ما حبت الرياء عليه وهركت من الأقصان والأشجار والأوراق والثمار وأوراق الثمار والأزهار وعدنا ما خلقت على قرار أرضك وما بين سماواتك من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم ألف مرة وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله عدد أمواج في حالك من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم ألف مرة وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله عدد الرمل والحصى وكل حجر ومدر خلقته من مشارق الأرض ومغاربها سهلها وجبالها وأوديتها من يوم خلقت الدنيا من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم ألف مرة وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله عدد نبات الأرض من قبلتها وجوفها وشرقها وغربها وسهلها وجبالها من شجر وثمر وأوراق وزرع وجميع ما أخرجت وما يخرج منها من نباتها وبركاتها من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم في مرة 
وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله عدل ما خلقت من الإنس والجن والشياطين وما أنت خالقه منهم إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم من ألف مرة وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله عدد كل شعرة في أبدانهم ووجوههم وعلى رؤوسهم منذ خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم من ألف مرة وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله عدد أنفاسهم وألفاظهم وألعاذهم من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم من ألف مرة وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله عدد طيران الجن وخفقان الإنس من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم من ألف مرة وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله عدد كل بهيمة خلقتها على أرضك صغيرة وكبيرة في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها مما علم ومما لا يعلم علمه إلا أنت من يوم خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم القيامة في كل يوم من ألف مرة وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله عدد من صلى عليه وعدد من لم يصلي عليه وعدد من صلي عليه إلى عليه من يوم خلقت الدنيا في كل يوم من ألف مرة وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله عدد الأحياء والأموات وعدد ما خلقت من الحيتان والطير والنمل والنحل والعشرات وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله في الليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله في الآخرة والأولى وأن تسلي عليه وعلى آله منذ كان في المهد صبيا إلى أن صار كهنا مهديا فقبضته إليك عدلا مرضيا لتبعثه شفيعا حافيا وأن تصلي عليه وعلى آله أدنى خلقك ورضا نفسك وزنة عرشك وميداد كلماتك وأن تعطيه الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفيئة والحوض المولودة والمقام المحمودة والإزة الممدودة وأن تعذب برحانه وأن تشرف بنيانه وأن ترفع مكانه وأن تستعملنا يا مولانا بسنته وأن تنيتنا على ملته وأن تحشرنا في زمانه مرته وتحت لوائه وأن تجعلنا من رفقائه وأن تولدنا حوضه وأن تصدير بكأسه وأن تنفعنا بمحبته وأن تتوب علينا وأن تعافينا من جميع البلاء والبلواء والفتن وما ظهر منها وما بطن وأن ترحمنا وأن تعفو عنا وأن تغفر لنا ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات والحمد لله رب العالمين وهو حسبي ونعم الوكيل ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد ما سجعت الحمائم وحمع الحوائم وصرحة البهائم ونفعت التمائم وشدة العمائم ونمت النوائم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد ما أبلج الأصبع وحبة الرياء ودبة الأشباه وتعاقب الغدو والرواه وتطلدت الصفاع وتقلت الرماح وصحة الأجساد والأرواه اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد ما دارت الأفلاق ودجت الأحلاك وسبحت الأملاك اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى علي سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد <تصفيق> اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد ما طلعت الشمس وما صليت الخمس وما تعلق برق وتدفق ودق وما سبع راد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد ما ملع السماوات والأرض ومن أما بينهما ومن أما شئت من شيء بعد اللهم كما قام بعباء الرسالة واستنكذ الخلق من الجعالة وجاهد أهل الكفر والضلالة ودعا إلى توحيدك وقاس الشدائد في إرشاد عبيدك فأعطه اللهم سؤله وبلغه معمولة وعته الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفيعة وبعث المقام المحمودة الذي وعته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد اللهم اجعلنا من المتابعين لشريعته المتسفين بمحبته المهتدين بحده وسيرته وتوفنا على سنته ولا تعلمنا فضل شفاعته وعشنا في أتباعه الغر المحجلين وأشياعه السابقين وأصحاب اليمين يا أرحم الراحمين 
اللهم صل على ملائكتك والمقربين وعلى انبيائك والمرسلين وعلى اهل طاعتك اجمعين واجعلنا بالصلاه عليه من المرحومين اللهم صل على محمد المبعوث من تهامة والامر بالمعروف والاستقامة والشفيع لاهل الذنوب في عرصات القيامة اللهم ابلغ عنا نبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا افضل الصلاة والتسليم وابعثه المقام المحمود الكريم وآته وآته الفضيلة والوسيلة والدرجة الرفيعة التي وعته في الموقف العظيم وصلى الله عليه صلاة دائمة متصلة تتوالى وتدوم اللهم صل عليه وعلى آله ما لا حبارق وذر شارق ووقب غاسق ونحم رواتق وصل عليه وعلى آله من اللوح والفضاء ومثل نجوم السماء وعدد القطر والحصاء وصل عليه وعلى آله صلاة لا تعد ولا تحصى اللهم صل عليه زنة عرشك ومبلغ رضاك ومداد كلماتك ومنتحى رحمتك اللهم صل عليه وعلى آله أزو أزواجه وذريته وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأزواجه وذريته كما صليت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وجازه عنا أفضل ما جازيت نبينا أمته وجعلنا من المهتدين بمنهاج شريعته وعدنا بهده وتوفنا على ملته وحشرنا يوم الفزع الأكبر من الآمنين في زمرته وعمتنا على حبه وهب آله وأصحابه وذريته اللهم صل على على سيدنا محمد افضل انبيائك واكرم اصفيائك وامام اوليائك وخاتم انبيائك وحبيب رب العالمين وشهيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين سيد وسيد ولد ادم اجمعين المرفوع الذكر في الملائكه المقربين البشير النذير السراج المنير الصادق الامين الحق المبين الرؤوف الرحيم الهادي الى صراط المستقيم الذي اتيت اتيت هو سبع من المثاني والقران العظيم نبي الرحمه وهذه الامه او هذه الامه اول من تنشق عنهم من عنه الارض وتدخل الجنه والمؤيد بسيدنا جبريل وسيدنا ميكائيل المبشر به في التوراه والانجيل المصطفى المجتبى المنتخب أبي القاسم سيدنا محمد ابن عبد الله ابن عبد المطلب ابن هاشم اللهم صل على ملائكتك والمقربين الذي يسبحون الليل والنهار لا يفترون ولا يعصون لا يفترون ولا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ولا ويفعلون ما يؤمرون اللهم وكما اصطفيتهم سفراء إلى رسلك وأمناء على وحيك وشهداء على خلكك وخرقت لهم كنف هجبك وأطلعتهم على مكنون غيبك واخترت منهم خزنة لجنتك وحملة لعرشك وجعلتهم من أكثر جلودك وفضلتهم على الورى وأسكنتهم السماوات العلا ونزحتهم عن المعاصي والدناءات وقدس وقدستهم عن النقاعص والآفات فصل عليهم صلاة دائمة تزيدهم بها فضلا وتجعلنا لاستغفارهم بها أهلا اللهم وصلي على جميع أنبيائك ورسلك الذي شرحت صدورهم وأودعتهم حكمتك وتوقتهم نبوتك وأنسلت عليهم كتبك وهديت بهم خلكك ودعوا إلى توحيدك وشوقوا إلى وعدك وخوفوا من وعيدك وأرشدوا على سبيلك وقاموا بحجتك ودليلك وسلم اللهم عليه تسليما وحب لنا بصلاة عليهم أجر عظيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة دائمة مقبولة تعد بها عنا حقه العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صاحب الحسن والجمال والبهجة والكمال والبهاء والنور والولدان والحور والغرف والقصور واللسان الشكور والقلب المشكور والعلم المشكور والجيش المنصور والبنين والبنات والأزواج الطاهرات والعلو على على الدرجات والزمزم والمقام والمشعل الحرام واجتناب الآثام 
وتربية الأيتام والحج وتلاوة القرآن وتسبيه الرحمن وصيام رمضان ولواء المعقود والكرم والجود والوفاء بالعهود صاحب الرغبة والترغيب والبغلة والنجيب والحوض والقضيب النبي الأواب الناطق بالصواب المنعوت في الكتاب النبي عبد الله النبي كنز الله النبي هجة الله النبي من أطاعه فقد أطاع الله ومن أصاه فقد الله النبي العربي القرشي الزمزمي المكي التهامي صاحب الوجه الجميل والطرف الكهيل والقد الأسيل والكوثر والسلسبيل قاهر المضادين مبيد الكافرين وقاتل المشكين قاعد الغر المحجلين إلى جنات النعيم وجواد الكريم صاحب سيدنا جبريل عليه السلام ورسول رب العالمين وشفيء المذنبين وغاية الغمام ومصباح الظلام والقمر التمام صلى الله عليه وعلى آله المصطفين من أطحر جبلة صلاة دائمة على الأبد غير مضع محلة صلى الله عليه وعلى آله صلاة يتجدد بها حجوره ويشرف بها في المعاد بعثه ونشوره فصلى الله عليه وعلى آله الأنجم الطوارئ صلاة تجود عليهم أجود الغيوث العوامع أرسله من أرجه العربي ميزانا وأوضحها بيانا وأفصحها لسانا وأشمخها إيمانا وأعلاها مقاما وأهلاها كلاما وأوفاها ذماما وأصفاها رقاما فأوضح الطريقة ونسها الخليقة وشحر الإسلام وكسر الأسلام وأظهر الأحكام وحذر الأعلام حراما وعما بالإنعام صلى الله عليه وعلى آله في كل محفل ومقام أفضل الصلاة والسلام صلى الله عليه وعلى آله عودا وبدعا صلاة تكون ذخيرة ووردا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله صلاة تامة زاكية وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله صلاة يتبعها روح وريحان ويعقبها مغفرة ورضوان وصلى الله على أفضل ما طاب منه النجار وسمى به الفخار واستنار بنور جبينه الأقمار وتضاعلت عند جود يمينه الغمائم والبحار سيدنا ونبينا محمد الذي بباهر آياته أضاءت الأنجاد والأغوار وبمعجزاته بمعجزات آياته نتق الكتاب وتواترت الأخبار صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذي حاجروا لنصرته ونصروا في هجرته فنعم المهاجرون ونعم الأنصار صلاة نامية دائمة ما سجعت في أيكيها الأتيار وهمعت بوبلح الديمة المدرال ضعف الله عليه دائم صلاته صلواته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الكرام صلاة موصولة دائمة الاتصال بدوام ذي الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الذي هو قدب الجلالة والشمس النبوة ورسالة والهادي من الضلالة والمنقذ من الجهالة صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة دائمة الاتصال وتوالي متعقبة بتعقب الأيام وليالي صلى الله عليه وسلم <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على محمد خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم افتح فتوه العارفين اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم الحمد لله praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى is right to be praised praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى the beginning the end and everything that is in between 
We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah that Allah has blessed us with iman. Has given us beautiful surroundings of mu'mineen, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this day and all the days to come, inshallah, of our lives and whatever remains of it. May Allah fill it with obedience and goodness and khair and barakah. Just that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought this joy in our hearts today by opening the masajid and the haram al-makki and the haram al-madani, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that a beautiful opening and a fatih mubin for everybody in the entire world and all the masajid being opened, the madaris being opened. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us khulasi from, and, and safety and security and najat from this waba. Alhamdulillah, as we continue with the blessed seerah, which is the seerah of our, uh, the Prophet's life, but it's a seerah for our lives. Without that life, we wouldn't have a life. Without that life, we wouldn't have iman. Without that life, we wouldn't have Jannah. Without that life, we wouldn't know uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without that life, we would not have the Qur'an. We owe it to study this, this, this beautiful life. That was the life of my master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such a beautiful gift that was given to us. In shakartum la'azidannakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that if you show absolute shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives you an increase. We show shukr for the blessing of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, we should show, based on the ayah of the Qur'an, show shukr for Allah opening the harams up for us. Because la'azidannakum was a promise from Allah. Our job was to do shukr. And Allah is the one who gives mazid. And mazid in this case is going to be the opening of all the masajid in the world. Allahu Akbar. We see how people have become so disconnected. These masajid are our lifeline. These masajid are our ruh of the communities. The arwah and, uh, and the ajsad are nothing without that. It's like the gardens without water. The, you know, the, the die and wither away. And that's exactly what we're feeling because of our disconnect with the masjid, masajid. And then may Allah make us of those who are truly grateful for these blessings that Allah gives us from the masajid that Allah gave us, but we deprived and we never used to go. Allah, forgive us for this, uh, this, this in evil, evil laziness on our part and sin upon ourselves. We ask Allah to protect us and never make us of those again. Rather, we be of those who fulfill the rights of the masajid by keeping it alive for the five, masaj- uh, five daily prayers and beyond, inshallah. Likewise, we say shukr, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal, alhamdulillah, hamda yuafi ni'amu hu yukafi u mazida. We ask Allah for shukr and we ask Allah for, uh, for uh, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who showed us how to be in good times and showed us how to be in, in times of difficulties. And this segment that we're speaking about in the, in the life of the Prophet sallallahu is going to be one of difficulty, isn't it? Because instead of people just fighting and attacking, this is just of treachery and, and double crossings and uh, conniving. And, and that's all the, you know, the, the disbelievers are trying to do at this moment. Is trying to, they just can, can't stand uh, uh, anybody of Ahl Iman, until you become fully like them, back to their way, and then they'll accept you. That's the only way they'll be accepting you. So there was going to be no way for compromise for the Prophet Sallallahu who was trying to you know build ties with them. But they would just be instead of keeping the confidence, they were being treacherous. As we we dealt with, with the Ghazwa Dawmat al Jundul yesterday. And today we're going to be dealing with the Ghazwa. We mentioned and we touched upon it yesterday. The Ghazwa of Khandak. And the Ghazwa of Ahzab. Ahzab means from Hizbun. It's from the, uh, the Confederates. And this is going to be a unique and a really, really scary battle. And it's not a scary battle because of the things that took place in between it. It's because of the, the settings and the, con- the, you know, the concept of it. It's how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the Muslims that day with everybody going against them. So the majority of the Arabs, the, the Kuffar, they said, why are we not winning with these? They're only a small bunch. The, you know, the Muslims are a small bunch, but the Kuffar of Mecca said, we can't win. Why are we not winning? So what they did, they got all the tribes, one by one, they started linking up. So look, the enemy of the enemy is our friend. So even if we have enemies with you, enmity between us and you, he says, let's join forces to sort out this common enemy. And they convinced large groups of tribes and different groups 
all to come against this one enemy. There was they superseded as Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And and the the a G part is they've done this before. It's not it's not the first time it's happened. Inside of Makkah, they try to boycott them. They try to spread. They try, they try to tell the people that will come from outside. They said, make sure that you're the ones that went, don't listen, don't pay attention to the what the Prophet Muhammad says. He said, because what he says, fihi sahar. This is this, this magic inside of it. So people from the outside would be you know, trying to keep away. They put cotton wools in their ears, anything just to keep away. But when they saw the face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar, that Munawar face, and they would straight away be falling in love with it. And even the cotton wool that, uh, um, forget the beautiful Sahabi's name, Allahu Akbar, when he when he heard, he, despite him having all these cotton wool stuffed in his ear, the, the, the Quran that the Prophet Sallallahu was reciting when he was in Mecca, he was he pierced through his ears, he went straight to his heart, and he becomes Muslim. And his entire... Um, his entire tribe of those becomes Muslim from Yemen. And you're going to see that these are the beautiful things because this is what they call propaganda of in its original pure form. They're trying all these things. Oh, do you know he's bad? Do you know he's this? And do you know he's that? Like the famous story of the old lady, you know, when the Prophet was carrying her, you know, and it's, it's turned into beautiful nasheeds and everybody sings. And I'm not going to sing it for you. But everybody knows which is what I'm doing. You know, this, the old lady is taking, you know, the Prophet was helping um, the Prophet was helping her, this elderly lady. She goes, look, because you're such a kind person, I'm going to tell you, keep away from this person. They call Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it was only then, when at the end of this, uh, this conversation, when he says, he goes, by the way, what's your name? He says, he goes, do you know the one you were speaking about? Well, I'm Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she says, wow. He says, what people have been telling me, something, you know, she could have said, well, get away from me then. You were trying to trick me. Or she could have said anything. But, Reality speak for itself. The Prophet says in a hadith, it says, Laysa al khabr kal mu'ayana. He says, uh, he, uh, he is, How can I translate it? Hearing something isn't like seeing it firsthand. That's what it means. When you see it for yourself, no matter what people say, if you've seen it for yourself and you've witnessed it, there's no way you're gonna uh, you're gonna hate that one who they call Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these people they're all gonna be successful in gathering the armies against the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's all right and that's fine and we can say that okay, but this was everybody now from from the east of Medina to the west of Medina to the north of Medina, everybody. Now you picture how hard that's gonna be. Now, they're all going to gather and they're going to amass a huge army. But it's not going to be just, that's not how it's going to happen. The Musadif is going to tell you a bit of it and I'll, and I'll fill the details in, in between. So is this the battle? It's going to take place where it's called the Battle of Khandak because they dug a trench, as we're going to see in a minute. And it's called Ghazwe Ahzab because it's the Confederates, the different groups, they all gathered together to attack the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this took place in the fifth year in Shawwal, the month of Shawwal. Waqiyahua Yehua Iska ke jab bani nazir jila watan kiye gaye. Huyayi ibn Akhtab bani nazir me bara mufsid tha. So what happened was when we spoke about the bani nazir, so when they were ousted or taken out from the... Um, their homelands because they, they were treacherous with the Prophet Sallallahu that we spoke about just in the in the last lesson. Their leader, he's called Huyay ibn Akhtab. He's a very significant person. You're going to need to know his name because his name is going to be significant coming later. Why? Because his daughter is called Safiya. We're going to, I'm not going to mention too much about her yet. We'll deal with that in a bit. So she's a daughter, and very, very important. Who? Huyay. But Huyay ibn Akhta was a very, very mischievous person. So some of them, like you know, that they went to the other tribes and they settled down with the other Jews, if you will. So this Huyay ibn Akhta, he was a, he just couldn't take it. He says, why would the tribe of Banu Nadir fall just so easily? He says, we have to get them back. And he had revenge inside of his blood. So he says, Ye Khaybar me jarahata. So he went, he went to the Khaybar. He stayed in the fortress of Khaybar. Khaybar is a fortress like none other. If no, if they said that they can spend months and months and months 
and nobody will be able to penetrate the walls, the fortresses of Khaybar, which is a, it, there are many, many fortresses. It's like a colony of fortresses. One being the middle, the main one, if you will. But there's going to be many, many small outlier ones. And they were all connected from uh, like almost like uh, underground tunnels that they would have that they would connect to one another. So it's like a well uh, machine, uh, oiled machine, if you will. And nobody could penetrate them. So he went there. Now that's where he's gone. So he gathered the people of the Khaybar. He says, look, he says, we've had enough. He says, if, they take, if they've taken us, they're going to come for you Khaybar people as well now. So he says, let's go and let's get some help from the Meccans because we heard they hate them as well. And it said, enemy of my enemy is my friend. So he says, Huya ibn Akhtab gathers some of the other Jews from the Banu Nadir and some of them from the, uh, the, the tribes of Khandak. And he says, we'll all go and we'll seek assistance and we'll get fortification from the people of uh, the Quraysh of Makkah. And Quraysh ko aap sallallahu ki larai ke waste amada kar kia wa tadbir aur admiyo se madad dene ka wada kia. He says, don't worry. He says, what you, what, he says, what I want you to do. He goes, look, you clearly don't like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, so what we want you to, this is Huyay speaking, yeah? So he says, he says, what I want you to do is gather your troops and you come and attack. We're already behind them. So we'll attack them from behind and we'll support you. Not but just Banu Nadir, but the, the tribes of um, the Khandak as well will all gather with you and there'll be no way that they'll be to win. So you get them from the front, we'll get them from behind. There's no way they're going to lose. This was a plan set. Mukhtalif kabail milkar das hazar hoge on Medina Kochele. Allahu Akbar. The, the kuffar of Makkah just wanted an excuse. So they raised 10,000 strong people. This is minusing the Banu Nadir and the, the, the Khandak tribes. 10,000 of them raced ahead towards Medina al Munawwara with a, with, with a view to attack. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne sunkar wa mashwarai Hazrat Salman Farsi radiyallahu anhu ke Medina ke pas bajanib so now what's going to happen on this side now let's let's turn towards the Medinans the Prophet ﷺ gets news of this and he says look he says this, whenever he says let's do mashwara should we fight in the city or outside of the city so some, some of them said he says you know we should do it inside the city so one of them that was trained in battles he says look he says I'm telling you now which whenever an army has invaded a city. It's never been good for the city dwellers. He says the houses get demolished. There's massive losses. The families and children are, are you'll have to part ways with. It's not going to be good. So my suggestion is, or Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that we go outside of the city and we fight there. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam agreed. But he says, you're going to have to, all right, you're going to have to understand the second problem now. He says, Medina isn't like Makkah. Now, nor is it like the, the Masjid al-Aqsa, Jerusalem. Now, they're the three harams, like we said in the previous uh, uh, lessons. Not like them. Now, Makkah was a fortress. Why is Makkah a fortress? It's fortified by physical mountains are going to be all the way around them, surrounding Makkah. So if you wanted to defend it, all you had to do, as Abraha, when he saw, when he was going to attack all of the Meccans, they went straight to the tops. The mountaintops, the time of Fatih Makkah, you're going to see the, the Kufara all going to rise up to the tops of the peaks of the mountains and then they rain down storms and, uh, and arrows, etc., on the people who think they're going to attack. There's no way they're going to be able to attack. Makkah's sorted. Medina, ra rather, let me go towards uh, Jerusalem. When you look at Masjid al Aqsa, very, very different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fortified it because it's the Aram, but he's fortified it not by physical mountains. You're going to see, but it's going to be done by the state of the Muslims in the world. So if the Muslims are united, the Muslims are, are full of Iman and doing the things that they're supposed to do and not being in a state of uh, decadence and disobedience, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the Haram in, and the Haram inside of Jerusalem, Masjid al-Aqsa. And when they lose themselves, they lose their faith and go towards the, uh, the, the nafs and, and the beauties of this world, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strips it away from them. And that's how it is. Allah, Allah bring, bring hurriya back to the, and safety and security to Masjid al-Aqsa and all those, all, all those that are inside 
defending it as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring safety and security to everyone, inshallah. But Medina, Medina is different. If you look at Medina, it's absolutely flatlands. Everywhere you're going to look, flatlands. You'll see a few little hillocks, if you will. That's why they call a sila pahar. They call it a pahar, it's a mount, but they don't call it a mountain. It's like a slight little mountain, it's sila. So, alhamdulillah, when you went to um, uh, um when you went to Hajj the first time, you know, when our eyes fell on Sila Pahar, we remembered these stories and Allah Akbar, may Allah let us go to Medina again. You, you see the you know the gardens of uh, uh, Salman al Farsi and you see, and you see um, you know the the old houses of the Sahaba. You see um, the, the you know Sila Pahar when Kaab ibn Malik rose upon it and he would have seen the good news when he was coming when Allah accepted his tawbah. These are Allah Akbar. When you read these hadith and you go there. Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, may Allah bless us with that beautiful ziyarah again and again, inshaAllah. Allah, Allah, ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali wa sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Allah, Allah. Ooh, like they say, this that brings back memories. Medina, Medina. Every, everyone who looks at it once falls in love with it. Them, them open fields that you see on the outside. There's going to be houses there now, and you, but what you would have seen in them days, you would have seen absolutely open plan. Problem is that if somebody wants to attack it, there's nothing to defend it. Literally, they could just climb over the mountains and the little mounts that they are, and they can, they can attack. There's too many ravines in between. There's open spaces, flat land. They can attack from any which way they want. There's only one place which is a bit more uh, difficult. And that was where the Sila Mount is. Now, Sila Mount, if you look, it's, you've got almost like two like hill, uh, mounds, if you will, the hillocks. And in between, you've got like this open space, which is going to be the main place where people can come and attack. That will be the choicest place. So one of the Sahaba, whose name was Salman al-Farsi, the Persian Salman. Salman is a lovely, beautiful, beautiful individual. Like we mentioned about him before, but you, the little what you don't know is Salman, even though he was from the Persians, when everybody had their own families that they used to boss about, Salman would sit in a corner and he would say, you know, you are the Ansar, you've got your Ansar. You're the Muhajirun, you've got your Muhajirun. You've got your families. You're the Quraysh, you're back with your Quraysh. He says, as for me, I'm a Persian, I'm an outsider. I always feel, Bilal, he used to feel the same. He says, I'm an outsider. He says, I, I don't feel like part of it. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahu Akbar, he says, Ya Bilal, he says, you are my muazzin. He says, no one will wake up for Fajr until they hear your azan, Bilal. He says, in Jannah, he says, when I'm going to be walking in, the doors will be open for me. But Bilal, you're going to be holding the reins, you're going to be mine. So this is the way the Prophet sallallahu would, would make these people feel so, uh, you know, we're speaking about racism as being a, you know, a, the evil buzzword and stuff in the world that's taken off, that's a hatred. You know, all this lockdown, it's making people just want to blame somebody. People are getting ratty and people are irated with themselves, but they want somebody else to blame. And, and, it's, and it's coming to a brim. It's really absolutely flowing out. And shaitan's having a field day. All the big, I mean, hamazat is shayateen. All the big, rabbi ayyahdurun. You should pray these three times in the mornings and three times in the evenings to pre for protection from that evil shaitan rajim. But... And, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, look, a person who could be a Habashi, an Ethiopian, but he, and he could be accepted here. A Persian person who says, I don't have any family here. I'm an outsider. I'm a, I'm a person who you can class as a refugee. I came as a slave. I've got no uh, standing in society. The Prophet ﷺ says, Salman minna ya ahl al-bayt. Salman minna ahl al-bayt. He says, Salman is from my family. He says, anybody who says Salman hasn't got a family, Salman is from my family, O oh, Ahl Bayt. Allahu Akbar. He's saying that and declaring that amongst the Sahaba. The Sahaba would look to Salman. He says, who is this Salman? He's come from outside. We're from the Arabs. And, and this person has taken a, a central space in the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By Allah, it doesn't matter if you are close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or far, or if you're from a different zamana. By Allah, he loves you. He loves us, inshallah. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has that love for every one of his ummatis. And he wants to protect and save every ummah. We should make it our lifelong uh, mission in our lives that we make sure that we fulfill that, 
that, that want in the heart of the Prophet وسلم, that he wants to make sure as many people are saved from the hellfire as much as possible. That when he can see us on the Day of Judgment, that he says, Oh so and so, you're the one who gathered so many of my ummah that were gonna go into the hellfire, but you did the hard work and brought them to the deen. You brought, you saved them from the hellfire and entered them into the mercy of Allah. And he smiles at us with a beautiful smile. That's all we want. That's what we should dedicate our lives to. And that's the inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are accepted for that beautiful mission, inshallah. May Allah give us that fikr and da'wah, inshallah. So Salman is the one who he comes steps forward. He says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you wish, then maybe I can suggest something. He says something that I might not have experience of war, but what I saw from the Persians and I saw from the other the Christians, etc., and that I saw how they would fight. And it's something which maybe you guys have never seen before. He says, why don't we dig a ditch, a huge trench on the outside? So it's going to be a really, really long ditch. And then in, on the other side, there'll be the hillocks that will pr protect us. And in between this, nobody can will be able to get across. So right, quite rightly, the Sahaba says, no. He says, we've got horses that can jump across ditches. How big are you going to dig a ditch? So he says, no. He says, you don't know what I'm talking about. He says, these ditches, I mean, are going to be trenches. They're going to be so big that it'll take two, the size of two grown men. It's going to be wide that even uh, uh, 12 horses can't jump across. They're going to be trying to jump, but they'll fall down and they'll hurt themselves because it'll be so deep. So he says, well, uh, we've never seen this before, but let's try it. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet ﷺ gives hukum the to take turns now. All the armies and the people, he got the strongest people out. He says, start digging, start digging, start digging. So the Musanif says, alayhi rahma, he says, khandak khodne ka hukum apna diya. Dusre janib, shahre pana aur imarat se محکم تھے اور بعد مرتب ہونے خندق کے وہاں اپنا لشکر قائم کیا اور لڑائی کا احتمام کیا اور جب لشکر کفار کا آ پہنچا خندق دیکھ کر بہت متحیر ہوا so he says now at this point the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم now he's going to gather the people he says work in threes he says start, start digging and everybody has a portion everybody's but the problem was it was very hot at the time it was really really hot and it's going to be really, they're going to be really, really hungry and thirsty. And every one of them, the Sahaba were tying, you know, the famous stories you, you hear, and it brings tears to your eyes, that they used to tie stones to their chair, the stomachs just because they would take away the pain and the pangs of hunger. And when they would see that, the Prophet ﷺ, when he was you know, swinging, he was doing the work amongst that as well. And the Prophet ﷺ had two stones tied to his. And the Sahaba would almost feel like better because look, he says, what's our troubles compared to the troubles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And it's a very, very beautiful qissa. And it's, it's very, uh, there's nothing that you want to really miss, but it's a very short and it's a brief uh, lesson that we have here. So let's, you know, one of the, one of the moments when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, you know, hears that all the, this commotion amongst the ranks of the Sahaba, they dig in, dig in, they get to this boulder. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, says he says what's the problem? He says because we've tried everything, we've got the strongest people breaking this boulder. Nobody can budge this boulder. So the Prophet says, "Give me your pickaxe." And the Prophet then takes a swing. Says, Allah Akbar. And and he, as he's and he's saying his, his dhikr and he's breaking it first strike. A beautiful white light shines. Palaces of Sham are going to be shine, shining through. The palace of Yemen are going to be shining. Second one. And and and they seen these sparks. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi through his beautiful dhikr and his, his might, what all of the Sahaba failed upon, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi showed Allahu Akbar that he absolutely blitzed through this, this boulder. And this is how they built this trench. Now the kuffar have come on the other side. The kuffar have come on the other side only to be seen. He says, we're going to annihilate these and we're going to take these out. And you, you, would, you, you would have heard the, you know, the conversations on the way. Oh, they don't know what's going to hit them. They're not even ready. Which is going to surround the, all of all of the Medina. It's not like Medina now, which is big. It was a small place because we can easily take it out. It says, but at that time they were faced not with just the army, but they had this huge ditch in front of them. So they said, "Whoa, what's this?" And some of them actually raced ahead and said, "Watch, I'll do it." 
and they raised their head and tried to jump, fell and absolutely got injured and had to get back to the other side. So it's almost like a it's a ditch from both sides. So they had to rescue them from the other side, whilst the Muslims would attack them, the ones that fell down. So it was, it was almost like a no man's land in between. So Abu Sufyan says, mm, he says, we've never seen this before. Let's lay camp. So they step back a bit and this look, and they're just going to be looking at all of the, the Sahaba that are going to be on the other side of this trench that laid camps at some distance. So the, the Abu Sufyan is going to be on the other side at some distance. He puts the tent, digs it in. He says, now let's see what's going to happen. He says, we're going to have to work out a way to get these lot. How is he going to get across? And what's going to happen? You're going to have to wait and find out and join us when we when we continue in this beautiful seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How this beautiful battle of Ahzab, battle of Khandak will take place. What will happen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the and the brave soldiers that was by his side. We're going to see how, despite their hunger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after them because of the bravery and the iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq and understanding. We ask Allah for tawfiq that he lets us gather for this beautiful seerah for the rest of our lives, inshallah, and for the dedication of the Prophet Prophet's ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts us for, for this, this uh, noble work, the work of the anbiya, and the awliya, and the sulaha, and the ulama. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us light in our hearts, light of the, of the Prophet sallallahu and the sunnah al mutahara of his sallallahu alayhi wa in our hearts, in our homes, our communities. May Allah protect our homes from all waba and bala and shayateen and, and evil eyes. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this light that he takes us from the dark, min al-dhulumat ila nur he takes us from darkness to the light, the light of ma'rifah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light of muhabbat and love and itiba of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah by this light and this by this remembrance that Allah takes away this waba, gives shifa to the ill, that gives protection from, for everybody in this world of the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to make our akhlaq Muhammadan. We ask Allah to make us Muhammadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us with beautiful akhlaq. May Allah give us Actions that he will be pleased with. May Allah keep us in company that he will be pleased with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us connected with the ones who love Allah and will teach us how to love Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be always with the righteous and always be on the good side of the ulama and the awliya of his subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to open the masajid, the madaris. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the affairs of those who are struggling for jobs and money. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take away the worries of those who have the worry from our neighbors, our loved ones, our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless one and all. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barakatuh.